So let's say now that a waveform originates from the sinus node. It goes into the atria, it goes into the AV node, it goes into the bundle branches, and then onto the Purkinje fibers. And so what happens to the P wave? The P wave is inscribed as a positive waveform. So it will result in something like this. If we have an impulse that originates from the AV node rather than the sinus node, so it comes from here, it generates an electrical spark. The spark goes this way, the spark goes that way, and this way. Which one is activated first? Is it going to be the atrium or is it the ventricles? So it would be the atrium. The electricity will now be going to towards this direction. This is going to go like this. What's going to be inscribed in the electrocardiogram? We will now have an inverted P wave. And then number two and number three eventually comes over here. And therefore, they will create a QRS complex and a T wave. Notice that there is an inverted P wave. This is one of the characteristics of a beep that comes from the AV node an inverted P wave before the QRS complex. So that's the first characteristic. There is an inverted P wave before the QRS complex. Again, if this is the AV node and this is the bundle branch or the bundle of his, and now there's also a possibility that an impulse could come from the AV node, but on the lower region. So now again, the spark is created and it's going to move this way. So what is going to be activated first? Is it the atria or the ventricles? The ventricles. So if it activated the ventricles first, you will have a QRS, but this one is also going up right there. So it eventually will have a P wave that is inverted after the QRS complex. So there are two characters characteristics so far. If we see a P wave that is inverted after the QRS complex, that also is going to be evidence that this beat is coming from the AV node. And now the impulse is coming right in the middle of the AV node. So the spark is going to go like this. And so the movement of this current is going to occur at the same time going up as well into the atria, as well as in the ventricles. So technically, now you will have a QRS complex and a P wave that is going to be inverted that will be occurring at the same time. The ECG can only record one waveform at a time. So it will always record the biggest or the strongest waveform. This is weak. And therefore, what's going to happen is you're going to have a QRS without an identifiable P wave before and after it. Those are the characteristics of beats that are coming from the AV node. One, an inverted P wave before the QRS or it could be an inverted P wave after the QRS, or no P wave that can be seen at all. These are the reasons then that I assume that these beats are coming from the AV node. Inverted P wave before the QRS, inverted P wave after the QRS, or a QRS that does not have a visible P wave. If you take a look at this strip, can you find a P wave? So what is our assumption? If we do not see a P wave at all, where did they come from? The AV node. So let me ask you another question. Do you see P waves? So if they're inverted, where are they from? The normal inherent rate of the AV node is between 40 to 60 per beats per minute. So that if we see a rhythm that has the characteristics of a junctional beat, we would call that a junctional rhythm. However, if the rate is between 60 to 100, then we would call that accelerated junctional rhythm. And if it is over 100, then we would call that a junctional tachycardia. What is the difference between AFib and junctional rhythm? AFib with versus junctional rhythm. All right. AFib is irregularly irregular, and this one is regular. So there's also what is called a premature junctional contraction. A premature junctional contraction is something that's early and that the morphology of it is going to be different. 
And so let's take a look over here. We have a regular rhythm and all of a sudden there is an early beat on this designated by the arrow. And so therefore we call this premature. And because the premature beat does not have a P wave, what do we baptize that then? We baptize that as a junctional B. That is a premature junctional or premature nodal contraction. They're one and the same term. So here's another example. Notice now that we have a regular rhythm and all of a sudden, voila, there is a beat that comes before. So we call this premature. Premature what? Where did it come from? It, we notice that this does not have any P wave. This is coming from the AV node. So therefore, we call that a premature junctional contraction. What is it that characterizes things about the AV node? Whenever there are beats coming from the AV node, this is not a common rhythm. And usually, it is going to be associated with damage to the AV node or perhaps more likely going to be a manifestation of digitalis toxicity. So whenever you have a patient that manifests rhythms coming from the AV node, we always have to check, is the patient taking digitalis? And have we checked the digitalis blood level lately? Those are the questions that you're going to ask because junctional rhythms are manifestations of digitalis toxicity.